Welcome to GRE. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Where is the U.S. housing market headed? Then, the United Nations currently recognizes 193 sovereign nations. What's the right number for you to own real estate in? And what's an easy and inexpensive way for you to own some income-producing land in another nation today on Get Rich Education? If you're looking to grow your passive income from real estate, pay attention. My Property Stats is a deal analysis tool developed by an active investor to cut the time it takes to analyze any deal by over 90%. For any real estate class, you can calculate the exact price to pay to hit your cash flow and IRR goals, build a world-class pro forma, calculate the most you should pay for a renovation, run multiple scenarios with a comparison tool, and more. My Property Stats is the all-in-one toolkit for real estate investors. That means more deals, more cash flow, and more returns. Go to mypropertystats.com slash GRE now and use the coupon code GRE to get 10% off your first year. That's just $90 a year for a tool that can save 10 hours per deal. No more spreadsheets, no more juggling multiple files. Use coupon code GRE to get 10% off at mypropertystats.com slash GRE. Knowing the difference between a turnkey provider and a vertically integrated rental property company can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars over the life of your investment. Some companies sell you a property they don't own, renovate it with contractors they don't control, refer you to a property management company they don't manage, all in multiple markets because they can't source enough inventory. That's why truly passive investors work with our friends at JWB Real Estate Capital, perhaps the country's only vertically integrated rental property investment company. They operate in one market, Jacksonville, Florida, and their whole job is to make investing in rental properties easy for you. In fact, because of their vertically integrated approach, their clients have gained 79% more home price appreciation than the overall Jacksonville market since 2013. Find out more about why it pays to invest with JWB. Call them at 904-677-6777 or go to jwbrealestate.com slash GRE. GRE listeners can't stop talking about their service from Ridge Lending Group and MLS 42056. They've provided our tribe with more loans than anyone. They're truly a top lender for beginners and veterans. It's where I go to get my own loans for single family rental property up to fourplexes. So start your pre qualification and you can chat with President Chaley Ridge personally. They'll even deliver your custom plan for growing your real estate portfolio. Start at RidgeLendingGroup.com. You're listening to the show that has created more financial freedom than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. Welcome to GRE from Richfield, Minnesota to Richland, Washington and across 188 nations worldwide. I'm Keith Weinhold. This is Get Rich Education. Yes, the United Nations currently recognizes 193 sovereign nations. Hey, does that mean that five of them aren't listening to GRE? (laughs) Well, what's the right number for you to own real estate in? We'll get to that shortly. But first, where is the housing market headed? We've got some signals here. The J hath spoken. Yes, Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Wasn't exactly dropping comedic knee slappers there at his Jackson Hole speech a few weeks ago, was he? Not since the Star Wars prequels have people felt this strongly that something needs to be changed. The Fed wants to crush lingering inflation. They want to crush it like Emperor Palpatine's pursuit of Luke Skywalker. We learned that they are serious about restoring balance in the force there at the Fed. (laughs) Namely, that is getting today's 8% plus inflation back down to their 2% target. Powell calls it restoring price stability. And for many, this is going to be a painful process. Powell, you know, in the past, he's indicated that he does not want the legacy 
of Arthur Burns. Burns was a former Fed chair that did not do enough to stomp out inflation back in the 1970s. It sounds like he'd rather follow in the step of Burns's near successor, Paul Volcker. Of course, he famously jacked rates up to near 20% in 1981, and that did kill inflation. And Volcker is still lauded as a hero for doing that. But this is all bad news for some. Recessions are often marked by lower employment and an austere consumer. Most expect Powell to announce another substantial rate increase at next week's meeting. And hey, there's no need to tailgate the Fed meeting. The NFL season is in full swing now. Okay, so don't you go do that. Housing supply and demand are both down. It would take a prolonged and severe recession for home prices to drop substantially. That's the likely take on that. Historically, home prices are resilient even in a recession, but price gains have largely stalled. This market has clearly become worse for sellers in just the past few months and better for buyers as those buyer-seller dealings have pretty much normalized now. Now, of course, it's not going to be that much better for buyers if Fed rate hikes translate into more mortgage rate increases. But you can take some solace in the fact that any wave of distressed home sales is pretty unlikely, like what happened 15 years ago. Today, homeowners can afford their payments due to strict underwriting. Homeowners have record equity gains from last year and low mortgage rates, whether they bought them with low mortgage rates or they refinanced to them. So homeowners are content to hold on. Now, conversely, landlords are in great shape, especially in the single-family rental space. These higher mortgage rates are helping single-family rental owners because it's priced out. These conditions have priced out those wannabe first-time home buyers, and that's what's keeping single-family rental demand high. And the housing market, of course, is worst for renters and that wannabe first-time home buyer. CoreLogic's single-family rent index shows 13.4% annual rent gains. Really healthy. And in fact, if we open that up to a longer time horizon, John Burns Real Estate Consulting tells us that over the last six years, single-family rents have increased more than $500. Yes, that's over the last six years. So great for landlords not for renters. Let's remember, too, that for the homeowner that wants to take out a loan for remodeling projects, they've now got to deal with higher interest rates on HELOCs, home equity lines of credit. So this hurts them and remodeling associated companies. Industries that are already in a downturn include home builders and mortgage companies and real estate agent industries and home furnishing companies. So really, in conclusion here, The boom times associated with cheap debt are done. They are gone. Home price gains have stalled. Rents are soaring. In a recession, the best places to historically invest are in necessities like housing, healthcare, food, and energy. Hey, well, join me live on Wednesday night for our St. Louis Properties webinar. Yes, you'll have me live there with you for a buying opportunity of income property in St. Louis, Missouri. Yes, it is live, but it is not in person. So you can join from your home. And where could you go to get started for a GRE webinar? Well, at grewebinars.com, as we are in the process of launching this for you. We've had our listeners buy a bunch of properties there through this St. Louis provider already. In fact, my co-host for this particular webinar is so impressed that he just bought a St. Louis income property himself. Price points are as low as $100,000 for some of these properties on this webinar. And it's just a great way to learn about a classic Midwestern cash flow market like St. Louis. That is in just two days. So go ahead and register now at grewebinars.com, and I'll see you Wednesday night. Again, grewebinars.com. Yeah, I'm telling you, we have made that easy to remember. (laughs) Now, 
I've often discussed how your team of professionals is even more important than the property itself in real estate investing, especially that property manager. And this is certainly true when you look to invest in real estate beyond the borders of your own nation, which is something that I myself have done for about nine years now. And importantly, today's provider guest is not a pioneer in Latin American investing by any stretch. In fact, they've got one of the longest track records there that I have ever known about, something like 25 years. Amidst an economic recession, one thing that can hold up is trees. Who didn't hear what Jerome Powell said? The answer is trees. They don't care. They don't respond to that. So it's a fairly simple and primordial real estate investment that we're discussing today. It's really interesting to learn about. You won't find any financing as an investor in trees, but you'll see just how affordable the prices are. We're talking about the opportunity to invest in trees. Hey, well, I'd like to welcome a special guest onto the show today. We first met in person six years ago, and I've met up with him regularly ever since at conferences because he's a prominent speaker about real estate investment of all kinds, including hardwood forests, which is what we're discussing today. He's been operating in Latin America for 25 years now. Welcome to GRE, Mike Cobb. Keith, thanks a lot. Yeah, actually, a little bit longer than that now. I, the years keep slipping up, right? For uh, 28 years, Keith, it's incredible. It just, the time flies, but we're having fun. We're doing some great stuff, and I'm really appreciative that you uh, have us on your program here to, to talk with folks about what we're doing and how it might make sense for them as well. Now, specifically with teak hardwood forests, that's a sector I believe you've been operating in continuously since 1999. Now, this is really well, an interesting program where in the past, hedge funds and wealthy investors only had access to things like this, but you have made this investment conducive such that individual investors at a pretty low price can own the land themselves in these quarter acre parcels. The property deed is in their name with yeah. trees that grow on top of it. That's exactly right. I think you hit on a couple really important points. One is that for whatever, hundreds of years, only the uber wealthy, right? The, the right. hedge funds or the family offices or the really, really rich individuals could participate in forestry projects because it just costs so much money to buy the land, plant the trees, maintain the plantation over decades in, in many cases. And so it really was something that was a very specific product to a very small subset of, of extremely wealthy individuals. Well, back in the uh, 1998, we read some articles about teak plantations and specifically about how Panama had passed a reforestation incentive that gave all kinds of tax breaks and incentives for people to come to Panama, purchase farmland or cattle pastures, right, that had been deforested and replant them in teak or mahogany, other species as well. We chose teak. Teak has a 25-year harvest cycle. And yes, in 1999, we planted our very first 100-acre teak plantation in Panama. It was an old cattle pasture that had kind of grown up into brush. And, and we were able to now turn it into a beautiful, beautiful forest that will be harvested in another four years and then replanted again for the next harvest 25 years later. The other thing you said, Keith, that I think a lot of times people have to pay attention to is this is titled ownership. You yeah. have escritura publica, public title. It's a basically the civil law equivalent of fee simple title. So you have title to the land. It's yours. They're your trees. That gives folks a lot of peace of mind, right? They own the land. They own the trees. And a reminder, because I own a property in Panama, it can take one to two years to get that deed, to get that title. The process just simply works right. slower in Panama. So one will need to pack their patience there. Mike, as far as the appeal and the compelling why to invest in teak, one way I've described it in the past, Mike, is that with investing in something like teak trees, they grow and therefore, investors can participate in both the value, perhaps that's on a board foot basis, and mm -hmm. the volume 
at the same time. Now, coming from the residential real estate world like I do originally, that's just something that you have to wrap your mind around. It's a different paradigm. When I talk about how your investment grows in volume, the trees grow in size while it could also grow in value. Coming from the residential real estate world, it doesn't work that way. Your rental single family home doesn't naturally grow into a duplex while it might grow in value at the same time. So it's both value and volume here. It really is. And I like how you've described it, right? That single family house never becomes a duplex, right? You will see rents increase over time. The rent you receive from a renter will go up over time, presumably. And the same thing does happen on the board foot price of the value of the lumber, right? So at the end of the day, we know that over the last hundred years, I mean, one of the nice things about teak timber specifically, there again, there are many species. A lot of species have been thrown around recently. Fast growing species do this, that, and the other thing. But teak has actually been farm raised for over 350 years, starting with the British in Southeast Asia. I mean, they came in and they planted the very first teak plantations again about 350 years ago. And so there's this incredibly long track record, this history of value in the lumber. And we know that over the last 100 years, teak itself, teak lumber has gone up on average about five and a half percent a year over a hundred years. And so this is, again, a very long track record. It doesn't mean that the future is going to hold, but again, hundred years is a pretty long time to know that. And the other side of it, which is the part that I smile about, because this is the piece that is the fact that the trees do grow. I mean, physically the trees grow and get bigger. And so your single house is becoming a duplex, is becoming a four bedroom house over time. And the really neat thing is, is trees don't care if there's a recession or an economic challenge or COVID or anything like that. They just simply continue to grow year in, year out. And so actually COVID spiked the price of lumber. I mean, and, and it's gone way up and it's come way back down. And I think these are the kind of spikes where you say it's an average of five and a half percent a year. Back in 2019 and 2020, I think teak lumber went up about 35, 40%. Now it's flattened off. But again, if you look at it over any long period of time, these spikes way up, push those averages up. But the trees continue to grow right through COVID and recession, depression, it doesn't matter. So it's a great asset class because it's truly counter cyclical to the market. You bring up so many good points there, Mike. (laughs) If you, the listener, the viewer are thinking, could this investment ever be for me? Or what are some of the pros and cons? Mike brings up the fact that this is so (laughs) uncorrelated with so many other things that you might be investing in. Whether there's a global health crisis or a war in Europe or fluctuating mortgage interest rates, the trees don't care. They just continue to show up and grow. And when we talk about variety of trees, Mike, of course, different trees have different attributes and different values. I grew up doing one of my summers from college in forestry in north central Pennsylvania, and we would mark maple trees and oak trees and the more valuable black cherry trees, and you learn about the different attributes of them and the values attributed to them. But with teak, that has some very special properties, like the natural oils that are intrinsic yes. in the wood as it grows that makes it fire and weather resistant. And for example, that's why teak wood is so popular in outdoor furniture. You can leave it outside and it holds up well against the elements. So tell us more physically about that teak teak tree itself. You brought up a really good point about the hardness of the wood. That is the most prized and valuable, I guess, attribute of teak. However, teak, because it grows in the tropics, can grow in very rainy areas. And in rainy areas, it'll grow much faster, but it won't grow as hard. The perfect teak requires about a six to seven month rainy season and a five to six month dry season. And what makes the absolute best teak is a very clear differentiation. You've got rain for six or seven months. You've got absolutely dry for five or six months. No rain, none, zero. And so when you have that type of environment, you get the perfect teak. You get the absolute hardest teak. In fact, they have to use diamond dust on their saw blades because it's that hard of a wood. Wow. But that's what gives it the ability to withstand rot, fungus. That's why they use it for furniture, as you said. They use it for boats and decking on yachts and things like that. They actually use it in the oil industry because the oils of the wood actually prevent sparking as well. So there are incredible industrial uses to teak that we don't even think about because it's kind of hidden, right? But teak has so many different uses because of these specific qualities. 
but it requires an exact type of geography. And I know you were a geography student. This particular geography is perfect and parts of Panama offer it. The Darien province is where our plantation is located. It's where the vast majority of the teak is actually grown in the country of Panama because it offers that six, seven month heavy rainy season and then a five to six month perfectly dry season. And again, that's what creates the optimal characteristics of the teak wood that you then turn into lumber that makes the furniture and and other items. Talking about the Darien province in eastern Panama, a province so rugged and wild, that's the reason that the Pan Am Highway is discontiguous. It does not bisect the Darien province of Panama. That is correct. We're just into the Darien province, but I have actually been to the end of the Pan American where it ends. It's a right. And it just stops at a river and then it's just jungle the rest of the way to to, uh, Colombia. A major highway with a dead end there. Well, Mike and I are going to talk more about the timeline. And what about the management? Is there any ongoing management of the forestry, of the trees? And what are the costs and what are the returns? In the meantime, you can learn more at a great report that Mike put together for us at gremarketplace.com slash teak, where you can learn more about it with the pro forma and photos and details and a map and more. But Mike and I are coming back with more. This is Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. You can get a 50-year-old house somewhere or buy a new one directly from the builder with tenant resilient amenities already built in. With over 3,000 Florida units at different construction stages, they are exclusively for investors. President Wagner and Alaska and team also invest strongly in their own product. That's belief. Start at buildtorentdirect.com. That's build the number two rentdirect.com or text 407 927 5074. Hey, my friend Damian Lupo informed me the checkbook IRAs have been made illegal by the U.S. tax court. If you have a checkbook IRA, your holdings are now disqualified with taxes and penalties up to 50%. But don't panic, Damian and the EQRP company can fix this. Those IRAs can be converted into EQRPs retroactive to last year, getting those tax deductions and reducing your taxable income. In this way, you can invest your 401k or IRA in real estate, Bitcoin, gold, and even your own business. So whether you're a full-time investor or retired or even a dentist with dozens of employees, if you're listening, you qualify, the EQRP works. It's the solution. You'll control your money, kill UBIT, and pay way less taxes. To learn more about this strategy and free up your retirement money, get the newest EQRP special report. Text GRE to 307-213-3475. That's text GRE to 307-213-3475. This is author Kristen Tate. Listen to Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold and don't quit your daydream. Welcome back to Get Rich Education. We're talking about teak tree investing. They don't grow so well in North America. So we're talking about particularly doing that in Panama. It's the opportunity for you to own individually titled quarter acre parcels. Mike, a lot of investors, real estate investors, they're used to getting monthly income streams from a tenant that rents out their single family home or duplex or apartment building, but it doesn't quite work that way here. You told us about a 25 year harvest cycle and maybe some listeners are wondering, oh wait, do I have to wait 25 full years in order to get my return? So tell us more about that life cycle of the tree, including the management and the thinnings along the way. I can remember I'm here in my home in, in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, and right across the street is the Bavarian Inn where they have the Rotary meeting every Tuesday morning at 730. And back in the late 90s, I was a member of the Rotary Club here, and I would walk across at you know seven o'clock and we'd sit and have breakfast. And at 730, they'd ring the bell and start the meeting. 
But I was missing a lot of meetings because I was headed to Panama very frequently in the very early stages doing research, meeting management companies, looking for properties, closing on property, hiring management companies, the whole thing, right? And so I can remember the folks at the table, the breakfast table were giving me a really hard time. Like, wait, are you nuts? I mean, Panama, are you insane? 25 years, you're gonna, <laughs> 25 years. And after a couple of breakfast meetings or whatever, I finally got the answer that worked for me. And it, I think works for a lot of people. And it was simply this. In 25 years, I'm either A, going to need the money and I'm going to be really glad I did this, or B, I'm not going to need the money and I'm going to be really glad I did this. <laughs> and, and here I am and you're 22 now. So we're 22 years into this thing. And let me just say, I'm really, really glad we did this. But what we found out along the way is that you talk about everybody getting their rent check, like people in the real estate or cash flow business, right? They want their rent check every month. And I think there are different periods of cash flow. We obviously don't want to get a paycheck. We strive to be paycheck free. But if we get a paycheck, that's every week or every two weeks. If we get a rent check, it's every month. If we get dividends from a stock, it might be every quarter or every year. So we have this cash flow mentality of two weeks to maybe one year in our heads. But 25 years is a cash flow cycle. It's a very powerful cash flow cycle, which is why the family offices and the super, super wealthy families have used timber for so long because it's a 25-year cash flow cycle that stewards wealth into the future, stewards wealth into the future, right? And it does it repeatedly. So if 25 years, I'm getting this first harvest, presumably I'm still alive in four years and I'll get it. Then in 25 more years, my children will get it. But if they're all screwed up and they spend all the money and they waste it, they blew their 25 years. But the trees get replanted and then my grandchildren have another chance at it 25 years later and their children. And so this teak timber gives families the opportunity to steward wealth into the future on a 25-year cash flow cycle. Wouldn't bet the farm on it, of course, right? Because it's 25 years. But if you have money setting aside for things like trust, right? And you can put it into a trust. I mean, so you can own it inside vehicles as well as individually. So all of us, and this is money I want to put for education for my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren forever in perpetuity. This is the kind of wealth stewardship that timber, and in this case, teak timber, specifically affords an investor. It's absolutely why I did it. I wanted money for myself in a few years, maybe, and I'll be happy. Like I said, I'm going to be happy I did it in a few years when we harvest. But then I want my children to have the money, my grandchildren to have their thing 25 more years on, so 50 years from now. While we talk about 25-year cash flow cycles, it's true. The thinnings do produce an income stream in years. 12 is a minimal income stream. 18 is your first kind of real income stream. And then 25 at the actual harvest. So those are your three, 12, 18, and 25. So you don't have to go the full 25, but your big payday truly is in year 25. And then you reinvest less than 1% of your proceeds back in to get the trees replanted. And then it goes on again for another 25 years. So this is really important for people to understand. But for me and for the folks, and, and literally we have over a thousand folks now who have decided to own one of these teak parcels yeah. or in many cases multiples, right? So we, I think we're over a thousand parcels uh, delivered and we've had to go out and buy more land and plant more trees. And Keith, you mentioned management. This is back in 1998. I had to go to the Library of Congress. There was no Google, right? <laughs> so I went to the Library of Congress and spent two days looking at books and magazines and periodicals and just on and in reports that I could get out about Teak so that I could educate myself enough to go hire a management company. I didn't know very much, but I knew enough that I didn't want to do it myself, of course, but I needed to know enough to be able to interview management companies to ask the right questions to make sure they could do the job. And we actually hired a company called Hayo Forestall, yeah. and they have done a tremendous job for the last 23 years. They had to prep the land in the year prior, then we planted in 99. So over the last 23 years, they grew the baby seedlings, they cleaned the land, they planted them, they've maintained them. And it's this scientific management that's being done by a professional management company that produces the ultimate result, which is the highest quality teak. And that's what we want. We want the highest quality teak, of course. And from an investor standpoint, I think it's also important for folks to understand that we have aligned ourselves with our investors' interests. Our cut is 20% of the harvest proceeds. 
So our goal is to make the absolute most amount of money for our investors as possible because we get 20% of higher numbers. So our goal is to make the number as high as possible so that we get 20% of the biggest number. But obviously that works with for the investor's favor as well. Truly aligned interests between you, the operator, and that individual investor. Yep. Okay. So with thinnings done by the management company, there is a small piece of income at year 12 and year 18, but it's at year right. 25 where there's that substantial payout and the cycle can begin once again. Yes, correct. A lot of people, they often haven't invested outside of residential real estate investing before. And then there's another group that hasn't invested outside of their own home nation before, especially outside of North America. So when it comes to this foreign investing, investing across an international line, was there anything specific that a new investor to that should think about or look out for maybe that they had not been thinking about with their domestic investing? Our development company has been around since 1996. And we developed a book called The Consumer Resource Guide. I know that you've made that available to yeah. folks on your website. In Excellent. Fact, and here it is, The Consumer Resource Guide. This is the kind of document that helps us coming out of our home country to do proper due diligence. And you mentioned earlier that sometimes it takes you know one to two years to get a title. I've actually seen it take longer than that. It's very bureaucratic. It's very cumbersome. And it does, I like your saying, pack your patience. That's a good one. Pack your patience. The good news is, is that civil law is very different from common law. And that when you sign a contract, when that contract is signed and registered, it actually is the legally binding document. The title is almost superfluous at the end. It doesn't, I know it matters to us as coming out of North America and, and everyone's getting their titles, but that contract is truly the binding instrument for the transaction. Even if you never got your title, you would have full legal recourse in a civil law society, which Panama is civil law, with the contract. And obviously, the titles do come. They just take a while. The systems are very bureaucratic and time-consuming, but you do get title to the property, and those trees are yours. But there are a few cultural things that I think need to make us a little more conscientious about the transaction, very conscious during the process. And we also offer tours. One of the things that's fun is a couple of times a year, we run a bunch of people down there, whoever signs up and wants to come. And, and we go out to the teak plantation, people can go see their trees. Or if, if they're thinking about ownership of a parcel or parcels, they'll be alongside other folks usually who already have owned a parcel. They can see what's available. And um, it's neat to go there and physically walk in the forest, see the trees, and understand that these may be trees that you would own and, and the next generation of trees would be for your next generation too. It's cool. And you and your company are there to help lead investors through, hold them by the hand and really make it easy and approachable for people to get started. Sort of a, a concierge service is how I think of it. We do. And that's always been our philosophy, right? We've always been a service company. I'm sure you know Zig Ziglar and sales training that he does. And and one of my favorite mantras is one of his. And it's, if you help enough other people get what they want, you can have what you want. And so we've always put service first and taking care of clients and handholding the concierge side of things. That This is a big part. It's a huge part of who we are as a company, who we are as people, but also we embody that in our corporate culture as well. And the tours are fun. People come down. We do the teak, of course. Then we go to the canal, maybe. I think we always go to yeah. the canal. We do some other stuff. It's tremendous. And the other thing I think people kind of get hung up on, and we haven't even talked about it, but actually ownership of a quarter acre of teak is under $7,000. I think it's sixty eight eighty. dollars So it's you know $6,880 and you own a quarter acre of property with the teak trees on it. We've made it very, very affordable and it's a small bite so that if people have other investments, and I hope you all have lots of other investments, but the T can become one of the investments that you put into your portfolio, understanding that it is a long cycle cash flow, 25 year cash flow cycle, and it's the way to steward wealth into the future. We bought an existing, it's actually three, but we bought three contiguous, today they're 16 years old, they were 14 when we bought it, 16 year old teak plantations. So if folks are saying, well, I'd like to get a little money out before 25 years, you can own a 16 year old quarter acre parcel that will harvest in nine more years and then be replanted and go into the 25 year cycles after that. So that's an option for folks who are looking for a little bit of cash flow sooner 
but understand the power of generational wealth stewardship on a 25-year cash flow cycle after that. Now, is that price going to vary based on whether someone buys some quarter acre parcels with newborns or saplings versus that 16-year-old hard stand? The 16-year-old teak is just under 20000 for the quarter acre. The ultimate return, again, nobody knows the future, right? It's hard to predict. You know, it's impossible to predict. It's called what it is. We've picked a timber that has a 300-year track record. It's got a 100-year pricing track record that we follow. We've tried to be as conservative as possible in this sort of what I call predicting the future. But today's price of teak using the 5.5% increase and the volume of teak at a good rate. We take average timber that's good quality. We're not talking about the super giant trees with the highest end quality. No, good quality, average growth trees, a $7,000 baby teak parcel today turns into about $94,000 over 25 years. And a $20,000, I think it's just under 20, I think it's 18 and change, but call it $20,000, 16-year-old parcel turns into that same $94,000 but over a nine-year period instead of a 25-year period. So it's basically the same internal rate of return. The IRR is about 11% in both cases, which is a tremendous IRR. And sometimes we kind of get, again, hung up on this 25 years, but my goodness, an IRR of 11% for 25 years, that's huge. That's $7,000 turning into about $94,000. Small bite lets you get into it but then huge numbers on the back end. And then it just, again, goes on and on generation after generation after generation. Now we think about that internal rate of return, which is somewhat synonymous with how I think of a total rate of return. Is there any sort of management cost that's ongoing for that investor or is it just pay for a parcel upfront one time? The management fee includes property taxes, which is important. Obviously, you got to pay your property taxes. I think it's about $125 a year for the parcel. So it's, I hate to use the word de minimis, but it's basically a de minimis management cost to maintain the parcel because it's being, because again, if it was just a quarter acre, it would be outrageously expensive to manage it. But because our plantations are hundreds of acres, we get the economy of scale on a hundred acres and then everybody pays their quarter acre proportionate piece. Oh, this is really affordable and approachable. It's almost like inflation it hasn't is. hit Panama or something. To make it clear, <laughs> <Not much. laughs> yeah. For the listener, for the follower here, Mike and his company, there aren't people that are all just based in the United States and then just go down there and check on things in Latin America oh. every once in a while. Your company has a presence in Latin America. We do. We've been down there since 1996. I lived in Nicaragua for 14 years, raised My wife and I took our two-year-old daughter when we moved there. We had another little daughter. So I've lived overseas as an expat for 14 years. We have about 150 people in the company and 140 of them live in Latin America. And some are in Europe. And I guess Mexico is Latin America, but I'm thinking Central America. But yeah, I mean, we have a few in the United States, a couple in Europe, but the vast overwhelming majority of our folks are in the region, in the specific countries that we work in huge teams on the ground. I'm there all the time. I'm in Belize eight to 10 times a month. I'm in Panama six, eight times a year. Nicaragua, probably you know five, six times a year. So we're there all the time and we absolutely are making sure that what needs to get done gets done. Uh, but you know, the other side of that, Keith, is when you hire really good people and you empower them to do their jobs, again, you got to find the right people. But when you find the right people and, and empower them, you can really trust that they get the job done well. And they do. But, you know, I'm sort of a Reagan guy. I mean, trust, but verify. So, you know, we have all the checks and balances in place, of course, but that's been a winning formula for us, finding the right people, hiring the right people, and then preserving. And again, we have a lot of folks have been with our company 15, 20 years. We have some people been with our company all 26 years at this point. So great longevity with retention of team members as well. Mike travels so often. We're grateful that he was able to sit down with us in one place for a little while in order to share this with us. Teak tree investing in Panama. Again, it's something where you're typically not going to get financing. However, they may have a payment plan at zero interest for you there on these parcels to help you out a little bit and really just make this approachable and open it up to a lot of people. We talked about the price for the parcels. We talked about the returns in the management and that they do offer tours. If you want to learn more, you can get started at GREMarketplace.com slash teak. That's GREMarketplace.com slash 
T-E-A-K. That's where you can get started with this. Mike, do you have any last thoughts at all about tea hardwood investing? It's the old uh, Chinese saying that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. So if you hadn't invested 20 years ago in timber and antique, well, the next best time is today. And and I am very, very happy I did it 22 years ago now. And I hope that a lot of folks listening today will decide to get the information at least, right? Request the information, take a look at it, and see if this is the kind of investment that would be right for you and your families and your future generations. And as we learned, of course, you can buy new plantations now, or you can kind of buy time and buy ones that have already matured for 16 years as well. So there is an option there. Mike, this has really been fascinating to talk about. Thanks so much for coming on to the show. Thanks for having me. Lots of fun, Keith. Yeah. Well, importantly, if you're an American listener here, Panama can be a little, just a little, like foreign investing with training wheels on your bicycle. Panama has close ties to the United States, largely because of the canal. The dollar has widespread acceptance and use in the nation. Yeah, when you request more information, you don't have to, but consider asking about their upcoming tour dates, those in-person tours. Panama's great. Panama City is the most cosmopolitan city in all of Central America, and it's really close to the canal. You can do the tour before or after you decide to buy some parcels, or you might decide that it's not right for you at all. You can see your trees growing on your land titled to you, and that's a really cool experience. It's something that I have done myself in Panama, my land and my trees. I discussed that way back in episode 60. Dozens of GRE listeners have gotten into teak tree investing. Some have bought 10 parcels. You can buy as few as one. But like anything, learn more, ask some questions, and do your due diligence. You can get started again at gremarketplace.com slash teak. Until next week, I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.